welcome to the Imperfect Parent Podcast, Gospel Hope for Imperfect Parents. I'm Brendan Willis, a pastor at Sovereign Grace Church in Warunga on the North Shore of Sydney. I'm joined by Dave Taylor, the lead pastor at Sovereign Grace Church in Warunga. G'day, mate. And his mm-hmm. lovely wife, Emma, who leads our women's ministry. Hello. Is, I wish you could see her. <laughs> I'm glad you can't, actually. <laughs> well, face, face for a podcast, not a video. <laughs> no, my love. Much my face. <laughs> well, we're thankful to have you here. And, and it's wonderful to have so much wisdom. Uh, we've been serving now together for over 14 years, guys. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, a long yeah, time. You can get how, have you, murder. how have you uh, put up with me for so long? <laughs> <laughs> it's been wonderful. Uh, well, obviously, we're kicking off uh, our podcast with the first episode today. The obvious mm-hmm. question is, why another podcast on parenting? Aren't mm-hmm. there enough already? Yes. Yeah. So I was asking myself that question just this morning as <laughs> I left the house. Why are we doing this again? <laughs> Yes. So do tell us, Brendan. We're all ease. Why are why are we doing I'm it? I'm asking. Uh, why are we here? doing yeah, it? I don't mind why you doing you? it, Brendan. <laughs> we I think the title suits us. Yes, that's the only reason the I agree to it. Parents. The imperfect Welcome, parents. Mr. and Mrs. Imperfect Parents. <laughs> we can tell you all what not to do. Yeah. yeah. It's so true though, isn't it? Um, that all of us as parents just I think we're constantly faced with our imperfections mm. and yep. our failures as parents. Yeah. And yet at the same time, I think we feel a deep conviction that the gospel has something to say about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, I guess I've been mindful of that just in listening to uh, a lot of the parents in our church and our friends that there's a lot of advice out there that tends to have a similar message, which is kind of this all kind of hinges on you and mm. you need to kind of get this right or mm. you could stuff up your children for the rest of their lives. And You're going to make or break your kids. You, you, you are the critical factor. Mm. And I think, you know, Charlotte and I, we're, we're really early in our parenting journey, but we do have a conviction that, that God's present with mm. us and that there's hope to be found in Christ and in the Bible. And, and um, at least that's part of my heart is, mm. yeah, is that more good. of us as parents might enjoy some of that and learn from others. Um, so that's yeah. why I'm here as the host. <laughs> you, I'm, I'm looking to you guys as, uh, as the, the, the source of wisdom here. The imperfect uh, parents. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, look, I, I think my big heart in seeing this done, well, two, let, me, let me say two things for, for our church folks so we not be confused. Firstly, I think for Emma and I, if there's ever a podcast we didn't really want to do, <laughs> it would be this one. Yeah. Because if we don't, <laughs> I mean, we don't feel qualified in most things. But this would be one of those you're like, yeah, um, is there anybody else? And we looked at that. We seriously we seriously looked at, okay, well, who else could do this mm-hmm. instead of us? Because you're just aware, yeah, we've, we've done some things well in God's kindness. We've made other mistakes that were all us. Um, and we're still in the thick of parenting. Even mm-hmm. though our kids are different ages, you're still very much there. And yet we're here ultimately, not because we're perfect parents. We're definitely the imperfect parent variety. But I think with a real heart for our folk. Mm. And I think when we were younger, we had a lot of people helping. There was a lot of seminars, a lot of messages on parenting, some really good books that suited the the, the generation and the season people Mm. were in. Whereas now there is an avalanche of advisors on Mm. this and people have much less time. Mm. So shortage of time, many advisors And so as you look on with people, you're just aware, gosh, so many people seem overwhelmed and discouraged. Mm -hmm. Um, Yet, particularly when we lived in in the States, which was just before we had kids, we were around many, many, many really wonderful parents that we learned a lot from. Mm -hmm. And so if we can pass some of that on, what we learned Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, um, then we'd be be glad to. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Some wonderful reflections here. And I think you're tapping into a vein of something that's on my heart as well. And and, and it's something that I've observed, even as a young parent, um, is that like there seems to be a lot of parenting in isolation, where yeah. it's kind of like mm. you and your you know iPhone trying to tap into uh, the latest podcast, maybe like this one um, mm-hmm. or not, mm. or uh, worldly wisdom or counselling or Doctor Google, and kind of standing together just as a couple alone without anyone with you on the journey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's right. Yeah. And, and the truth is, I think for many people, you know, if we're honest, they want to be alone too. The, mm. There's to a degree of, no, my kid's unique. They're very mm. different from every other kid that I've ever met. 
And so I need to sift through all the advice and then just make my own path for my kid, unaware that the Bible speaks to these things mm. at all. Yeah. <laughs> As if the Bible is just yes. something completely different. Yeah. Rather than realizing, no, the, parent, the Bible speaks to you as a parent and it speaks to your kids it's all in god's word Mm. otherwise we're saying there's this massive area of our life that the bible has nothing to do with Mm. which is so not true Mm. yeah that's so true isn't it that that we can overlook the bible as the greatest source of wisdom we have um, as parents jesus Mm. wants to help and i guess like one thing um that we're really talking about here then for you guys aware of your imperfections and us um aware of imperfections and just starting out is the beautiful gift of being in the community of Jesus mm. with the people of Jesus yeah. where we're sharing that word back and forth with one another we're encouraging one another in Christ and and together all of us as imperfect parents growing um, together in 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 more glory, glory to Jesus in and through yes. our parenting mm-hmm. and I think it you know that's kind of the vision of this podcast in a way is that people would catch that vision of mm. us together bibles open praying for one of the sharing god's word with one another and growing together yes um yeah. as imperfect parents mm-hmm. to, to honor the lord get Jesus. the conversation started huh yeah get yeah, it started yes, amen. Amen. And, um, Good. and uh particularly looking to benefit from you guys and your wisdom well that probably leads us to the next thing i really wanted to ask you guys obviously like this is our first episode and we're just kind of kicking off I'd love to hear a bit about your parenting journey. Mm. Um, when did you guys first become parents? We were so young. <laughs> we were. How long have we been married for? Um, nearly 24 years. No, no. But oh, we when had we a kid. Got, oh, not 24 years, years before Josh was born. How old am I? Like 83. It's going up to your 50th anniversary. <laughs> How long have we been married for? Um, we had been married two, two years. years. Yeah. So married two years. And then, um, so we really had it. We got married and had a year in the States, mm-hmm. came back. And you were pregnant pretty quick off the back of that, come to think of it. So most of our married life, the vast majority, we've been parents. We only had two years outside yeah. of mm-hmm. being parents. So, yeah, now we have five kids. Josh, who's 21. Mm-hmm. Amy, who's... About to turn 20. Oh, my. I'm just aging, by the way. <laughs> Lydia, 17. Liam, who's 13. Wow. And Savannah, Perhaps who's 14, 11. Yeah. Is that mm-hmm. right? 11? No. No, 12. Close, yes. 12. You're so yeah, close to getting so close. Right, I did so well. I got all the got, way to, yeah. to I was. Fifth that's one. why I wanted to let you answer that question. I actually wanted to see if you knew all our kids' names <laughs> and ages. <laughs> it was <laughs> set up. <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was so, so good. good. And for our yeah. listeners, we have th- our older three are all biological kids. Younger two are in foster care with us. So there's two sort of different mm. uh, you parenting know, that, that, journeys, really. Yeah, <laughs> slightly different parenting journeys. To it's been beautiful to watch because... Uh, you guys had just got the kids when Charlotte and I got married, uh, coming on 10 that's years right. ago. I remember bringing them. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. You were fresh into the, the, the uh, yeah. foster yeah. caring yeah. space. Fresh, <laughs> fresh yeah. Bleary eyes. Yeah, naive. <laughs> yes, we were all the above. Uh, 10 years, yeah. Yeah, yes. 10 years. Jeez, man. It's been Brilliant. a wonderful uh, a joy to, to watch mm. you guys and mm. how God's uh, blessed you <laughs> with those two and, and used those two as a significant means of grace. Yeah, um, to yeah, grow true. you guys over the years so it's, it's been wonderful to watch from the cheap seats mm-hmm. um, Charlotte and I we've, we've obviously we've been married coming on 10 years we have three kids and I think it's probably safe to say now a fourth on the way I think that's Ooh. pretty well public knowledge Shining. wonderful in October so our kids are Elijah who's four and a half and then we have Isaac who's turning three next month or probably last month depending on when you're listening to this Um, (laughs) and then we've got Benji who turned one at the start of the year and then uh, our littlest one number four who's due in October is it going to be a boy or a girl this is the question well or is it going to be one or two that's the other question always the the big question well we found out the other day finish with the finale well yeah that's it we want to go out with a bang (laughs) so if we're going to have a bang bang (laughs) yeah public meltdown why not do it in style yeah go for it um (laughs) No, but uh, Charlotte's mum was exactly the same age. My wife, is Charlotte, is a twin, and she was exactly the same age when she was pregnant with Charlotte and Celine oh. as Charlotte wow. is now with this pregnancy. So, <coughs> right. Could be no. trouble ahead, Brendan. Scan can be exciting. Yep. Stay tuned. Double the trouble. Next episode. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we should just be uh, counselling Brendan. Oh, man, In the next yeah, episode, we're going to do a Pray I, for I, Charlotte I, episode. I already need it. So <laughs> how much counseling I'm going to need on the other side of that announcement. So, um, but we're full of faith and excitement. We're so yeah. thankful to God, God for knows. what a gift. Mm-hmm. Uh, how would you guys describe uh, the, the journey of parenting over the last 22 years? Mm. Yeah. You pick a couple of words. What, what would you say? 
Well, when you when I when you ask that question, the first word that comes to mind, which I know is a bit of a cliche, but it would be a roller coaster, because mm-hmm. there have been many joys and many highs, and there have been some hardships and some challenges and some lows. So, I think yeah, a roller coaster. It's been probably harder than I ever thought in a lot of ways, and mm-hmm. then in different times, it's brought more joy than I would have ever thought mm-hmm. it would as well. So, yeah, I I completely agree. In two words, hard, hard and joyful. You know, I think. Um, yeah, in life. I mean, I'm, I have the privilege of serving as lead pastor in Sovereign Grace Church and Global Missions Director for Sovereign Grace Churches, obviously in 46 different countries. That sounds really complicated, but the hardest role I've done is, is actually being a dad. Mm. There's just things about it that is not the it's not the kids, but it's mm. things that happen in your heart and things you're right. doing that are just very challenging. And yet, I, so I would say it's been a, an awful lot more harder than I ever thought it would mm. be. As a, as a young man entering mm-hmm. the world of parenting, but it's also brought more joy than I ever thought mm-hmm. possible. Yeah, uh, so it's both of those things at the same mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Yeah. I had a lot of parenting theories before I had kids. Oh <laughs> yeah. Me too. Oh, listen, <laughs> we, we, we had. Here's, here's what happened to judgy. us. We had we had Josh, and we thought we should probably write a book on parenting because we are smashing <laughs> so it. Well, and then we had Amy, that. and then we're like, hey, maybe we'll hold off a little bit. And then we had Lydia, and we're like, we will never write a book on parenting <laughs> in our lives. It was just as time went on, you realize all these theories, all these things that you think, I will not do that with my kids. Yeah. Yeah, it's not as easy as it looks. Yeah. No, we, it when you we'll, start? we'll never give our kids any screen time ever. No, they will never see a all these things in their we life. said our kids would never do. I think I'll never threaten my just kids. Just about ever. everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it squeezes it squeezes things in you and presents challenges. Even 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 like I said a statement of the, a few a few moments ago in terms of we can all tend to feel like our kids are unique. Hmm. Um, but you have to fight that as a parent because you have your kid and they're, they're just that's the best thing in the world and you just think no they're, they're totally different. Mm. Well, they're actually just the same as all the other ones, but we but it's hard when it's actually your kid. You feel very differently, and so there's some great joys of parenting, but some things that are very hard. Mm. And that's so true. I mean, I I think what you're saying is really resonating with me. You know, even not yet five years into our parenting journey, um, more joy than you would ever expect. You know, that's absolutely been mm-hmm. uh, the story of, of our beautiful little boys. <laughs> um, but yeah, also the s- sleepless nights and yeah. perpetual sickness yeah. and, and other things that are quite challenging. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we really yeah. do need one another and, and God's, yeah. The God's best is when you see sin in them and you wonder where on earth they got that from. <laughs> and then you realize, I'm just exactly the same. I, I do the same thing, yeah. same tendencies, same temptations. Yeah. Oh man, it's always well, before special. We, before we had kids, I thought I was gentle, I was kind, I was patient. <laughs> I thought you were gentle and kind of patient. <laughs> and then we had kids and uh, revealed, maybe I'm not all those things I would have liked to be. Yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. yeah, well, you realize some of your quirks that you you that people have brought to your attention before. You didn't realize how annoying they are <laughs> until you, you see, see them in your kids. Yeah. Yep. Uh, mm. Like one thing is I can be so hyper focused on conversations and, and people can feel it's a bit intense. I get really into the conversation mm. and it's just you and me and no one else in the world. Mm. And then I can't hear what anyone else is saying to me. <laughs> and uh, it's been brought to my attention so many times. Mm. And one of my kids now does exactly mm. the same thing. Fancy it drives me that. nuts. The and apple like, does not fall far from the tree. <laughs> but uh, it's my fault. you got to throw me. <laughs> I've only got myself to blame. Yeah. Um, well, that's wonderful, guys. What what would you say? What are some proud moments as mm. parents? You know, over the last um, uh, twenty two years. Mm. Mm. You want to go mm. first on that one? Yeah, it's, it's it's a hard question because I mean, the, there's so many moments that mm. flood your mind as they get older. They don't have to live that long before you you feel very proud of them. All of my proudest moments would be moments where they've either really responded to to Jesus. Hmm. or they've displayed a character quality that I would see in the Lord. And you're just so proud of them. You just mm. think, praise God. Um, so I remember when, like, when Josh got baptized, that was a really special moment. He was our first kid that got baptized. Hmm. And just seeing his love for the Lord and passion yeah. for the Lord and the way he worshipped, that was very, very special. But mm. I remember even actually when he was a kid and uh, they, they did a school performance at school. He must have only been about six or seven, something mm. like that. 
and all the kids were marching off the stage and he just turned around and held a girl's hand and helped her down the steps and I'm just like that is my boy there's just certain moments you're just like I'm so, so proud of that and I would say the same for Amy and, and, and uh, Lydia and Liam and Savannah there's just moments for mm. each of them that you look back on and think man I love your love for the Lord mm. and I can see him in your life and that makes me very proud mm. to be your dad yeah that's so good yeah I- I can see how that, you know, would would be something so special. Like, really, as Christians, like what we want more than anything else is our kids to know and love the Lord Jesus, right? And mm, yeah. Even uh, a, a recent moment for our real little ones is um, uh, Isaac is kind of obsessed with Paw Patrol, as every kid <laughs> that's his age is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, Skyler, and, uh, and is that? that? Uh, I, I don't do you know? know. Uh, oh, well, I actually do. I do know a few. A chase. Oh, yeah, yeah Chase I don't is know the main one. We're kind of at that stage now. We're so that yeah, and Bluey. So haven't seen that either. Anyway, um, <laughs> Isaac loves like Paw Patrol so much, and um, um, we overheard a conversation where Elijah asked him, "What do you love the most, Isaac?" And he's like, "I love Paw Patrol." <laughs> and Elijah said, "But you need to love Jesus the most." Oh, mm-hmm. that's, that's and, so cute. You know, yeah, but just so sweet. Yeah, yes. that coming out of the mouth of a little kid. It is yeah. encouraging oh, Lord, when you're you? like, oh some fruit <laughs> would that be the story of your life yeah, you that's know? Right. and as well as a Christian as somebody who loves the Lord yourself and, and understand all that that means yeah you know what <laughs> th- th- these should be the things that we right. applaud the most because when you think about it so say if the thing is you applaud the most I'm just so proud of the way they play football and they've done so well over the years and they've got up to first grade mm. and, okay how in light of eternity is that going to make kind of any difference right. to anything mm. yeah mm. whereas <laughs> applauding Christ mm. this is going to have eternal reality mm, so you, it's, it's, it, you just see it with so much more depth mm. you know this is this is mm. everything yeah. whereas the other stuff how what you did in grace so for example even in grace some of my proudest moments with the kids again is when they've worked hard mm. I didn't even mind what they got at the yeah. end of it I wasn't that worried mm. but you've worked hard and, and I respect that in you. That's a sign of the Lord at work in yeah. your life and your yeah. commitment to work yeah. ethic. And, mm. But you yeah. would have been your proudest moment. Yeah, that, no, I agree with what you guys are saying. I mean, look, it's <coughs> definitely not, as you said, not wrong to be proud of those moments of achievements. Sure. And, like, I've definitely yeah. enjoyed watching sporting games. Yeah. I've watched well, you haven't just enjoyed it. You've been one of those crazy mums. I am on one of those mums. Extra coach. <laughs> I said I would Extra never coach. be. One of it's those when you're running mums. on to drive beat up the opposition. So it's just, it's just this has gone too far. Time out. <laughs> now and again, Somebody get mum off the pitch, please. <laughs> true just, colors coming that's probably to true true display. Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. And you always have the same conversation, but on the way, hey guys, I, I'm, let's let's just you know be worshipful today, and let's not be too competitive. Mum doesn't want to get too competitive, and then within <laughs> minutes, the whistle's gone, and all right, get off. You know, it's just like oh dear, she's gone again. <laughs> We're not talking about my moments. Okay, yeah, sorry. Proud, yeah, proud, proud moments. Parenting yeah, moments. Yeah. So, but anyway, I have enjoyed the sports. I have enjoyed um, different school performances the kids have been in. Mm-hmm. And I think, as you were saying, I think just um, enjoyed, particularly, obviously, our older, and we have three older adult children now, and just mm-hmm. seeing that... Um, how they have reflected Jesus, them choosing to follow Jesus has has been proud moments. Not that they're always perfect; they de- they still mess up, like we all do. Like, but even seeing how they have dealt with those mistakes and walked through those mm, and owned those yeah, areas of, that. in need of growth. But I think also, I think I think yeah, as you were saying, just the way they show those signs of um, biblical truths or the gospel, just getting it a little bit. I remember even with one of our foster kids a few years back now, actually. They were talking to me and they were talking about how they had not come out of my tummy. They had come out of their birth mum's tummy. Mm. And I was like trying to reassure them. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. But, you know, we chose you. We chose you to be part of our family. And they just looked at me. They said, no, God chose me to be a part of your family. And I'm like, yes. That's what I meant. That's (laughs) what I meant. I just, yeah. yeah, Anyway. So I think, but just having them understand, I don't know if they understand that reality, but at least know that reality. Mm, That God chose you to be a part, God chose me to be a part Mm. of this family. Mm. That was, yeah, one moment I will always treasure. Yeah. Mm. I think something that's really special, like in this podcast, um, that, you know, you guys listening at home and not privy to is that having known these guys for, the last 14, you know, nearly 15 years mm-hmm. is that I've gone from seeing their kids as really little You were ones. our first babysitter. Yeah. Really think. You were, I mean, right? I still remember Lydia when you just arrived and she would have been four years old sitting <laughs> on the step saying to me, 
I'm not listening to you, Mr. Willis. It was yes. a proper like British accent. Yeah. You're silly. <laughs> yeah. Was that was now, this like last oh, week? Or? This, yeah. this was 14 you know, years ago yeah. or so. Yeah. And uh, just how the gods grown them and, yeah. and to watch you guys' parents from the cheap seats mm. over many, many years and to see what fine uh, God honoring uh, adults they've, they've grown up mm. into and for them to transition oh from God. kids that I'm babysitting mm. to actually my friends now yeah. I think is, is something really yeah. special. And watching them so use their, their gifts and abilities God's given them to serve mm. the church has been yeah, a real yeah, joy too. Yeah. Mm. Very sweet. Um, well, something we want to kind of introduce in this podcast, we do want to laugh, be able to laugh at ourselves because we're all imperfect. You have to laugh, and we want to, otherwise we just cry. That's the way it goes. I've heard, yeah. it, I've heard it said that you have to be able to laugh at yourself or someone else will do it for you. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly so, right. That will probably Take happen choice. too, let's be yeah. honest. So, we're going to laugh like, at each other. Yeah. Let's have a little laugh. Mm. And uh, to do that, I thought we, we might introduce a, a, a thing called a Michael Scott moment. So... All those listening at home that know Michael Scott, know The Office, the American Office, will be familiar with Michael Scott. Basically, he's the manager of The Office in in the TV series The Office. And he's quite likable as a character, but he's completely incompetent and he just (laughs) makes a meal of it. And so I want to introduce you to one example of that, just so you get a feel for Michael Scott. We're going to play a little clip of it uh, in, a, in a moment uh, for you guys to listen at home. Uh, basically, he was asked to be a motivational speaker at a third grade graduation for a disadvantaged community in the US. And in the heat of the moment during his impassioned speech many, many years ago, uh, I think it's a, a, about nine years prior or 10 years prior, he'd promised these poor disadvantaged kids that should they complete high school, um, he would pay for their college tuition, which in America is wow. massive. Yeah. And as a result, nearly the entire grade had gone all the way to complete their uh, gra- mm-hmm. graduation. And every year, he didn't have the heart to tell them that he didn't actually have the money to pay for it because he's just oh, a, a low level. That's and so he's awkward. strung them along for 10 years oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> until finally he gets told by all the other workers in the office he has to tell them. So he turns up at the, the graduation mm. ceremony and they play... Uh, the, the following song that they've written oh. for him in thanks for oh. his oh, no. support. Oh, dear. Oh, that is awful. That's, Dying. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to play it and uh, we'll listen to it so you guys can hear it and then uh, comment on a Michael Scott moment. Hey, Mr. Scott, what you going to do? What you going to do? Make a dream come true. Hey, Mr. Scott. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Make that dream come true. You came into a life and made a promise, but that made us honest, made us realize we don't need a compromise because we, we can have, have it all. all. Cause you made it possible for us to achieve the improbable. Hey! 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 Hey!
2.30 and it suddenly dawns on me, oh, I am supposed to be at the school right now picking up Josh from so his visit funny. to high school. So anyway, Dave thankfully was working at home that day and I was like, oh, Dave, drive me to the school! Like Because I knew it'd be quicker if he could drive me there and I could just jump out. So I think I was about, oh gosh, probably 15, 20 minutes late running down the, the road to get him and actually one of my friends saw me. She's like, don't worry Emma, Katrina's got him. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I just you turn up there and you're like, oh my gosh, this poor kid has spent his first day in a high school being a small fish in a big pond and his mum couldn't even bother to turn up so anyway I remember talking to him about it afterwards and he's like I knew you'd come eventually eventually (laughs) thankfully Josh is uh, chilled and laid back so that would be one of my big motherhood fails we had a a recent one uh, for me a bit of a Michael Scott moment Um, we obviously were studying new service and they're pretty long days and I've been a bit sick and, um, and preaching just this past week and uh, just absolutely exhausted at the the um, uh, at the evening. We hadn't had a lot of sleep, and we were having some difficult nights with the kids being up mm. at night. And and so we went to bed, and um, and uh, in the middle of the night, uh, one of our kids, Isaac, kept waking up with scary dreams and nightmares. And uh, anyway, we settled him back down into bed, and then he woke up again uh, later in the night. And I came into his room half asleep, and he's talking about Paw Patrol and <laughs> and complaining. I thought he was being disobedient and and uh, or difficult. So I start telling him off and telling him he's going to get a reminder and getting really cross with him. Uh, reminder is like our kind of uh, code for um, uh, to to be spanked. And um, <laughs> kind of and I start getting really worked up with him and 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 uh, angry with him. And uh, turns out he was actually sleep talking. And he was oh, oh and, uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, so we had to take bad. him into the room and, and cuddle him because yeah. that was the only way he was actually just completely asleep. And I was there <laughs> oh, thinking it was father. some sort of heart yeah. issue or something and him being disobedient <laughs> when he didn't even Poor know guy. what was going on. Yep. <laughs> so. no. we, we, we have just had a catalogue throughout our life at multi-ages of kids where you just have these embarrassing moments where you wonder if you should be parents at all I, I for me personally there's, there's many i remember i do remember sending amy to school once in high heels because she wanted to wear them well i was, was away really? i was yeah, away overnight and bad. she convinced you she was allowed to wear them yeah well she so, yeah. didn't think she would lie i remember one time i remember <laughs> one time when amy. amy i remember at one time when amy was about three she's very sweet this? for the listeners she, she, was, she was about three years old and she she was in the back seat of our car and we must have been talking about something she said mum and dad it's not very good to gossip Oh my gosh, that was terrible. That was, no, we were, I don't know. I feel feel like that's when we were, some kids in her class had some unusual names and we were just, Uh, we we were laughing at at the name. That's not very kind. It's like, that's not really very kind, is it? And we just My my embarrassing moment, the the moment that I remember is Josh must have been about three years old as well. We couldn't get him to um, drink properly because he couldn't speak very well. We couldn't get him to drink properly. So I we can't had a quite big, believe you're going to admit this. Yeah, I know. I'm just going to admit it live on it. it. <laughs> and, uh, and as a dad, the truth is, as a dad, I was getting quite anxious for him. Right. Like, what is what is this going to be? What's this going to mean? I don't even you know, know if Josh I mean, what's knows going, the story. What's going, on, no, <laughs> what's going on with him? You know, he's not drinking properly and all that. And I said, son, I just need you to drink this milk. It was a small cup of milk. And he's like, he's taking ages. I said, I just need you to drink it because I was getting quite anxious. And eventually I picked it up and poured it over his head. I just lost it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, now good news. This idea that, well, if I do things, it will totally damage your kids. He's still living to tell the tale. <laughs> yeah, all is well. But well, it's slightly scarred. Yeah. But, you, but you look <laughs> back on it. Slightly scarred, but doing okay. I know. He doesn't drink milk anymore. He doesn't drink milk anymore. <laughs> we, we do meet for counseling. But it was a terrible week, moment. But, <laughs> but it was one of those moments where you just realise sometimes we bring our own insecurities yes. into parenting. Oh, Both sides yes. of the coin. Yeah. We do yeah. things we do things that, that allegedly are there to help, but actually you look back and think, what yes. on earth was I think? And of course, actually what happened, it wasn't long after that, we found out he had a submucous cleft palate. Yep. He couldn't drink properly. And I've just mm. poured a cup of milk over his head to try and teach him to drink better. Disaster. Yeah. yeah or well, there's the time you, you told one At least everybody th- now knows they are definitely imperfect oh, parents. 100%. No doubt. About what about the time when, um, I don't know, you were having a discussion with one of the girls, I think, and then oh. and you turn around <laughs> Told to speak to the hand. Yeah, they'll tell you about that. Yeah, that's right. They still laugh about that. Don't tell us about the time when you told well, us to speak to the hands. Well, we all laughed about it at that moment. It was one of those moments that actually diffused the uh, situation because it, exactly it was just on there. But anyway, like, what? Yep. So that's enough about my sin. <laughs> but I, I, I just so appreciate you sharing that that truth of often we can be anxious for our kids mm. and yeah. that can bring out some real simple tendencies. Yep. You know, yeah. Okay. Um, one of our kids um, it seems to have a, like giftedness and then some sort of 
I guess the word is like neurodiversity go along with it, maybe mm-hmm. on the autism spectrum, something like that. And and there's different things he'll do that I can find myself going, you know, I want you to stop it. And yeah. mm. and it's not actually because there's anything wrong with what he's doing. No. It's actually because I'm worried about what, it may, it, what, yes. yeah, what, what is this going to mean and yeah. how are people going to relate Absolutely. to you. Yeah. And, and yeah. so, Which again can cause you to cocoon off rather than talking about it. Mm. So I'm just going to keep out the way because I can't quite cope with things that are mm. going on. Rather than just going, hey, can can anybody help? Is this stuff? Mm. Yeah, we're we're funny people. Yeah, we yeah. are. Mm-hmm. But praise God for family that yep. we're in this together. We're genuinely. Oh, I think there's a song about that. <laughs> High School Musical. <laughs> we're all in this together. Yeah, that's right. Please, yeah. Could be the, please could don't be the, sing it. That it's should have been the theme we tune for this Leah podcast. On we're all in this together. Oh, yeah, well, it's true. It could still be. <laughs> that's still time to change. Only you guys could see this podcast. She's dancing around the office. We're all in this together. But Emma, come back. Come back. <laughs> At least I'm not singing. <laughs> but there's something beautiful about that, that, you know, as precious as our families are and our wider family, mm. um, there's something even more permanent, even closer, even more long-lasting that we have because of Christ. Mm. Yes. In that what we have in our relationships with one another is forever. It's yeah. eternal. And as imperfect parents that together be feeling comfortable to share mm. with our struggles, knowing that our our righteousness, our acceptance is not based on being perfect parents, it's based on the finished work of the Lord Jesus and we come with the same need. Mm. Mm. So there's something so freeing in that that we can be known in our community for who we really are mm. and not be afraid of that. Well, that's right. And understand that others, our community will be such a means of grace to right. us. Bringing advice, mm. Bring counsel, bring care, bring comfort, mm. bring encouragement, bring perspective. Yes. There's so much mm. goes on yeah. when we open up our lives, mm. all of yeah. our lives, mm. and to one another. You you win basically. Mm. You win because yeah. you yeah. benefit from others, and you benefit others from others regardless of whether they've been through the same things as you or mm. not. Mm. Right. Yeah. I think so often we can think, well, you know, unless they've been a parent of little kids like I yeah. am, they probably don't have anything to, to help me. Well, they have mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit and they have the Holy Scriptures. Uh, yeah. So they've got everything yeah. to, to help us. We need we all need each other, not just mm. people that have had the same experiences with one another. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, mm. What a gift that is. Yeah. Mm. Well, we're actually, in this episode, we're, we're really asking the question, how does our past shape us as parents? And I thought it'd be really cool mm. to just kind of jump in and think about the memories that you guys have of your parents uh, growing up in the UK. Mm. Uh, so any thoughts on that? What, what, what are your re- recollections of, you know, growing up in, on the other side of the world um, mm. and, and your parents and what that was like? Maybe, Emma, you can kick us mm. off. Sure, yeah. Um, oh, look, I think I am very grateful for my parents and for the childhood they gave me. I think the longer I am a parent myself, the more grateful I become for my parents because mm. I realize how hard it mm. actually is. So yeah, I had a great childhood. My Both my parents, my mum and my dad but were- poor parents, we should just pause and pray for them. Because <laughs> I look back right. and I'm a girl like that. Apologize for the things, the things yeah, I put I'm them so through. Sorry. You're listening, thank, thank you, Paul and Jill. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> That's thank right. you, Paul and Jill. Thank you and sorry again. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Yeah. But um, yeah, they were very hands on. We did a lot of kind of parks, and swimming, beach holidays, which was camping, which I've come to realize as an adult, camping is not a holiday for parents. Like, it is hard <laughs> no. work. So, but I'm that's. Not sure it's a holiday for anybody ever, but there are for some a long people time, that's what they could else. afford. So, that we have some great memories as kids mm. camping. So, I'm grateful for them to that. Going to coffee shops, I remember going out for coffees and get donuts. Mm. So, I think we've oh. definitely taken that into probably our mm. parenting. But uh, yeah, growing up in a Christian home. Um, with parents that actually really modelled what living for Jesus looked like and built their lives around the church. So very grateful um, for that. And all they really wanted for us as growing up as kids was mm. for us to follow Jesus and, yeah, awesome. and love him. And just seeing how they have supported us in that, even for us, as it's meant us moving over the side of the world for them, which mm. I know would not be their preference to have us and mm. their grandkids living so far away, but just very appreciative of the support and care mm. that they give us, knowing that wouldn't be their preference. So, yeah, I am yeah, 100% grateful for my parents and my childhood. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be the same. M- both my parents know Jesus, uh, so I got brought up in a Christian home. Very grateful for that. Very grateful for their influence in my life. My dad um, worked very hard, so when I was, when I was very little, I mean, so I was born into housing association when I was actually born. We literally didn't have anything. So mum and dad still talk about jam sandwiches for them and getting me dressed ready for bed because even though it was the middle of winter, there was ice on the inside of the window. Yeah, right. Wow. No, no um, heating or anything. So my first memories of my mum and dad is my dad was a milkman. 
So when they're back in the day when they used to take yeah. you around and deliver it to the houses. Mm. And then he became a flower hole salesman, so selling to all the shops. Very hard work ethic. And my mum was always a stay-at-home mum. She knew she just wanted to care for me, my brother, and my sister. Mm. And that was a such a blessing growing up. And so they shaped me massively. Mm. In big part, not probably because of work ethic or mum staying home to care for his kids. Their love for Jesus yeah, right. was everything. Wow. It was just mm. so... It was everything in their lives. Mm. So they would work hard in the day and, and serve us kids and, and do things. And then the night there'd often be church meetings on and that we'd be mm. hosting. There's always people in our house, people that didn't know Jesus in our house, so they could tell them about Jesus. It was just that type of home. And some of my favorite memories actually revolve around that as well. I remember one time when I was sitting around the table, dinner table with my brother and sister. I must have been about 11, 12 perhaps. Mm. And uh, we were all just saying to mum and dad, oh, what do you want us to be? And they're like, I don't know, what do you guys want to be? And we were all talking about different job options, you know, what we could do when we're older. And I still remember my, my, my dad just saying, to be honest, kids, we don't really mind what you do. We just want you to love the Lord Jesus with all your heart and your mind and your strength. That's what we want you to be about. Awesome. Still vivid, still vividly. I could take you back to the table and where we're all sitting. It just so impacted us. And that was modeled for my parents. From I, I don't have any memory of that not being the case mm, that this is a so good. brother and a sister who really love jesus and are all in and are mm. building their lives around the local church and it affected me mm. Mm. that's so good wow I mean, what a gift to have parents that know enough christ mm. and oh, absolutely. we wouldn't be the people we are today without that mm. and yeah yeah i think like for me growing up um i grew up in a working class neighborhood dapto um hey. shout out to the dapto doggies <laughs> <laughs> um, who it works. Adapto Mall. <laughs> Easy way to shop and save. Um, <laughs> so is that an advertisement? Adapto, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We get a bit of advertisement. Yeah. Dog racing and um, rugby and, right. and uh, the Adapto oh. um, Mall. That's kind of the things that Adapto is known for. Not a lot. <laughs> but um, it was great. Working class, blue collar, solid blue collar community. And my parents uh, both grew up in non Christian homes. Mm. And um, in their teens, sort of late teens, as young adults, they came to, came to faith. And I think for them then, uh, they often spoke about um, feeling a bit unsure about how to raise us as Christians mm -hmm. and saying that they didn't really feel like they had anyone to model that for them. Right. They really tried to. Uh, to yeah. we, we were really always would go to church every week, every Sunday. and mm. and uh, But I, I think that that's one thing for, probably from my mum and dad is they really gave it their best to help us know and love Christ and so thankful to mm. have them as parents. But there definitely was a sense in which they felt uh, unsure uh, as people as a first generation kind of starting out that, that they yeah, had many guides to kind of help yeah. them mm. along the way um, my re recollection of my parents is I remember them being very close uh, my dad is um, still to this day just a wonderful encourager he's a very mm. kind hearted gentle hearted man and uh, they, they did really try to raise us to know and love Jesus mm. I probably think like they're probably their reflection is now that they probably feel like they failed at that in that mm. um, none of my other siblings are walking with Christ mm. anymore. And so they, they probably feel like they didn't do a very good job. But I would say I think they really did a wonderful job. Mm. Mm. Wonderful. Um, my dad uh, was a very hard worker. Um, and uh, as a result, he traveled a lot for work, probably about a quarter of the year. So a lot of our spiritual formation fell on my mom. Um, and, and she really, I mean, it was amazing with four very little kids at home and my dad away, uh, what, you know, she sort of managed to carry for us. Uh, but one thing I've, I've sort of on reflection of our household is that in, in the 20 years that I kind of lived at home, I never once heard my parents have a fight in mm. those 20 years. Wow. And I think there's some good things in that. I think a big part of it uh, was, however, that my dad um, grew up in an abusive home where his dad was prone to drink and um, and that was very hard and my dad was often the peacemaker in his home mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. part of the fruit of that is my dad um, probably felt quite and would say he, he felt quite uh, terrified about conflict to be mm -hmm. honest because right. of his past in, in many ways and sort of on reflection I can see how some of that has been you know transferred to me in a way and that I probably share uh, a similar kind of awkwardness around conflict it possibly is one of the hardest things I find about pastoral ministry to be honest mm, that, that wrestle yeah. with a fear of man and mm. and uh, the the how, how is this going to land on other people and how they're yeah. going to feel yeah. about That's that right. um, yeah. uh, which kind of like moves us on to the, the question I wanted to get you know you, know, you guys and your input on uh, which is you know where do you see 
ways in which the past has shaped your parenting today? Like mm. where in which as you look back on those kind of stories of things that have happened, uh, you can see that a kind of impact there because that can happen both positively and negatively. Like obviously mm. all of us have been deeply shaped by having Christian parents. Mm. Um, on the converse, I guess you guys as, as foster parents will know that, you know, things that have happened to your foster kids um, have had a real lasting effect on them as well. So I just want to talk a bit about that. Where do you see those kind of effects coming into play um, as parents? Mm. I think my my past, like I just mentioned a minute ago, in terms of my parents' values, mm. that what was cheered or applauded or loved the most was seeing Christ in somebody or introducing mm. that person to Jesus. That that molded me a ton. So that when I became a Christian, I just wanted that for mm. for everybody as well. So obviously, when you have your kids, you're like, well, <laughs> there's nothing more that I desire mm. than that they would find the treasure and know Christ. Mm. I want to applaud that and play my part in introducing them to the Lord. Yeah. Uh, I want to make sure that that's our that's our main thing. So I look back. I was that that came from my past. That was that was my own mm. upbringing, and yeah. it was such a value. I think then when we moved to the states as well, we were really challenged by the parents there in a mm. great way. Yeah, they were just so intentional and mm. consistent. I've never seen parents encourage their kids more. I mean, these kids were just so encouraged and enjoyed, but I've never seen parents so consistent then when it comes to discipline. Mm. It was it was both at the mm. same time. It was compelling, mm. and, and the fruit of those teenagers was compelling. Mm. It's like, man, there is a lot of really good kids that know God's word and mm. want to follow the Lord, and it was it was pretty compelling. So we were shaped. We've been very shaped by our past in that regard. I think one of the biggest mistakes we can make is thinking that, you know, we've just got to do it all ourselves and figure mm. it out for ourselves. No, I, I think one of the best things we did was find other people where I look at their kids and think, you know what, that, that's going to right. And then ask them how the heck they did it. You know, what, what did you do? Mm. What yeah, have you good. learned yeah. that, that helped that process? You haven't just got to read a book and then have a go. It's finding examples, and I think we did that. Mm. I think we were able to do that really early on when our kids were very, very small. So even, well, even things like Brady, for example, America. like um, having a date night. Mm. For us, we knew that was a value that we wanted to, could, because we were taught that the best thing you do for your kids is have a great marriage. Mm. The best thing, that one of the best things that they're going to learn from is a mum and dad who love the Lord and that are growing in Christ and offering a picture of Christ in the church. Mm. So I think Josh was about eight days old and we mm. went on our first date night. <laughs> because yeah, it was right just way. a value that we're like, we want to be so committed to each right. other because it's the best that we can give him. The best thing I can do for his mum is to make her feel like a wife who's desired mm. and wanted and not just all the time feel like a mom. Mm. And so so, but we learned that. That doesn't come from my head. Mm. That's other people's teaching mm. that's helped us and molded what we do. Mm. What do you think about that? Well, I think I would just follow on actually from what you just mm. talked about because I think that's great um, having – a mum and dad that model that but I think sometimes we mm. don't grow up in homes That's where right. we have Nobody a mum and dad yeah. and I think if you if being a, a single parent and just yeah. modeling yeah. how your dependence is on Christ and your love for him is exactly. is massive too so yeah and you can still lean whatever you're you can still so say say it is a single parent that didn't have Christian parents at all yeah You've still got okay. Who can I learn from? Yeah. Who can I bring Pulling into my community life? And, and, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's good. But I, yeah, I, I mean, again, we had we had quite similar um, upbringings, we probably did, in a lot yeah. of ways. But I think one thing I'm really grateful for, and how the past has shaped my parenting, is just the priority of of the church, and not just any church, but a good, solid Bible preaching, gospel centered church. And when I was, I remember when I was uh, probably 11 or 12 years old, my parents actually moved two hours away from where we lived to 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 be part of a local church which mm. I know in Australia standards two hours mm. is nothing but in the UK <laughs> standards that's like oh my gosh two hours the yeah. well they only moved for the church that's right yeah that's that why I mean the they, they moved because they there was a church there that they wanted to be a part of because of the values and the, and the leaders and the pastors there so which obviously when I'm 12 I don't understand that I'm just I'm just right. going with my parents because that's what they're what's their what they're doing but um looking back on that and how that actually then shaped me for us then obviously moving from the UK to Australia to as on the church part I was like of course Mm -hmm. we would move for a church why would we not do that that's something my parents modeled to me and I think um so I'm very grateful for that Mm -hmm. and there was something else I was going to say which has actually escaped my mind but I think they did they did things like they did uh bible reading with us they did different kids 
kids programs but I think I think the big thing I took away and how it shaped me is just their actions actually mm, not yeah. just so much what they they said they didn't like we didn't have huge long deep and meaningful conversations about God every day right. or anything like that but they live they live yeah. for Jesus every day so and then similarly I think going on to the parenting question what you flagged about America I think was very true I think that helped us bring the gospel into our parenting mm. so mm. again we didn't have kids at the time so it shaped us before we even had kids because I hadn't really seen that done in that way in terms of how the gospel linked to our everyday parenting rather than just training kids to to behave and to mm. o- obey for the sake of because you know we want to obey our parents mm. but actually well why is that why yeah. is that so yeah. important the fact yeah. that God has given parents as an authority when we disobey our parents that's disobeying God and that's not going to go well for us Mm. so I think that just kind of actually put a whole lot of theology probably a parenting that I had grown up with but just hadn't fully understood maybe where it had all had all come from so yeah so true the truth is in in life I mean whether we like it or not but I think it's an encouragement to parents the vast majority of kids become like their parents Mm. and they don't do that because of what their parents teach them they do that because they look at what the parents do Mm. I heard an analogy once where somebody was saying, you know, if I tell my kids, I want you to have a cold, I want you to have a cold, I really want you to have a cold, but I've actually got chicken pox, what they actually get is chicken pox. Mm. Because they become just like me. Mm. They get what I've got. Mm. And so that isn't, therefore, oh, so I'm a Christian, you're going to be a Christian. That's not what I'm saying. But in terms of the way they think, their values, Mm. the shaping influence, they're becoming like you. It's very hard to say to a kid, we just, you know, we want to be all in for Jesus, he's everything. And then they look at us on a Sunday morning. You look, you look so bored, and you miss mm. every other week, and you never really talk about Jesus outside mm. of. They they catch that. <laughs> there was a recent example uh, I remember hearing um, from the latest McCrindle research that's come out about the mm. decline in church attendance about Gen Z, and they were saying that seventy two percent of young people reported that one of the most significant factors in their reason why they disconnect from church or their church uh, habits is the example of their parents. Is that right? There you um, go. So wow, I think that probably stat. speaks yeah. to it, is that yeah. for young people even are willing to say a big factor in what I'm doing by way of church mm-hmm. and being involved in the community has been passed on to me for, from yeah. others. But yeah. that said, like wow. I think the beautiful thing, though, it's so easy to, to be thinking about, well, this is my past and therefore this is going to be my future mm. or yeah. you know whether that's positive or negative. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but the beautiful truth for all of us that I'm just thinking on as we're sharing is just Ephesians 4, uh, Ephesians 2, 4, which talks about after having been talked about how we were spiritually dead, it says, mm. but God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses made us alive together with Christ Mm. and just that beautiful reality that the Holy Spirit is in each and one of us so there's always hope Mm -hmm. uh, for us as as parents and so as we kind of round out this uh, first episode um, actually one thing I would add to that though because I just suddenly remembered when our time in America Mm. was um, we got we lived with a a great family in America Mm. we're still very good friends with them now and their kids a four year old a two year old and a brand new baby brand new at the time now they're all in their 20s and adults themselves and um, yeah just did a really good job of modelling parenting to us and I remember us Mm. sitting them down at the end of the year and being like okay Mm. so what's one thing we need to know about parenting that's so good and Mm. they just said Pray for your kids. That's and we so were like, good. out of everything what? that we've just been All the taught you've a masterclass in how yeah. to parent, and the one yeah. thing you want us to remember is pray for your kids. And that's so good. But that stuck with us. And I think, um, mm. I think the longer I'm a parent, <laughs> my advice is the same: pray for your kids. Yeah, sure, there is definitely things we can do and model and input, mm. but like the reality is, like you were saying, Brendan, if we if the spirit doesn't awaken our kids mm. to who they are and they need for him. Yeah, you obeying do, yeah, the law, yeah. but without we can't, a heart that loves we God. We can teach them these truths, yeah. but we can't make them come alive yeah, in their hearts. So, so good. I think that's just an important thing to oh, tag on. So thanks for sharing it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I would actually say the truth is, when it when it comes to, you know, what what what's something I've tried to grow in or things that I've brought from my past mm. to this, it would actually be this. I think my temptation would be towards pragmatically, let's get this done because if we do this, this will probably really mm. help. And there's nothing wrong with really studying the part we play. Mm. Mm. We've just got to hold that in massive context with realizing it's the Lord. Yes. Mm-hmm. These are the Lord's kids. Yes. And He will, He we will make mistakes, and He will use those mistakes for for their good and mm. His glory. And we'll do things well at times, which they won't respond to at all. Mm. And you just realize, oh my goodness. And certainly as our kids have got older, <laughs> mm. what you realize looking back when the kids are little, 
is it's relatively easy. It's time consuming mm. and it's physically exhausting, but it's relatively easy to get them to do what you're asking them to do mm. if you're consistent. And the things we can look at in that. Mm. But as they get older, it changes because they become their own people and you're giving them room to become their own people. And you realize now you can't control them in the same way. It's the heart that's controlling mm. them. So you have to influence. It's very different. And I think your, our, prayer, our prayer life has probably grown as the years yeah, have grown. As you realize they really, they yeah. really just are really the Lord. Control, and yeah. I can't control. Mm-hmm. There's a line in that uh, Paul Miller book, The Praying Life, uh, I think, where he says something yes. to the effect of, we realize my, our best parenting has been done through prayer. Yeah, yeah. honestly, and, yeah. Um, that's so true. That's, yeah. that's a great thing yeah. for someone like me to take away. And uh, one other thing I just pick up on what you guys are saying is just I love the way you've positioned yourself to benefit from others by asking questions. I think, you know, as a, a, a younger parent, um, new on my journey, it's so easy to maybe spend time even with people that are ahead of you, but never ask. Mm. Right. And I think for all of us, we know that if someone's not asking, it's very hard to offer our wisdom because we don't want to assume that that's even what someone wants to hear yeah. right. um, from us. But to position yourselves like you've done so well to ask and say, hey, what's one thing you'd, you'd want to encourage us in? I think that's a wonderful mm. way that we can benefit as we grow together as imperfect well, parents. Well, I think it's... I think it's um, well, yeah, I think it's humility, but I don't say that to say, oh, gosh, how humble you were. I think we didn't, wouldn't have classified it as humility. I think we would have classified it as just we are desperate parents that want to do the best thing we can for our kids. And we understand biblically that victory is made sure in the midst of many councils. We need people beyond us. Mm. And so it, was, it wasn't like, a, oh, we should be humble and ask. It was a, I can't wait to ask. <laughs> mm. How did you do that? What did you think about that? What made you say that? How mm. do you discipline because we were just so wanted to do a good job with what we had been called to. Mm. And we realized we didn't have that in and of yeah. ourselves. We need the Lord. And also, as they get older, you want to ask people, hey, how do you think we're going? Mm. You know, what, what do you, what do you mm. when you're around us, is there anything that you think, oh, mm. I'm not sure? That was another thing that the family modeled to us so well. I mean, yeah, here's reality, right? We've rocked up in America. Mm. We are just married. No kids. I'm 20 years She's old. She's 20. I'm kid. 24. We are clueless. <laughs> never had a kid in our lives. Clueless in a different country. We'd been there for about two months. And Tom and Renee, this dear family, sat us down and said, hey, listen, you've been living with us for a couple of months now. Just any thoughts on how we're going as a couple or as parents? What could we grow in? What are you seeing? <laughs> That's we humble. And, we're like, and we, we did laugh out loud. We're like, oh, I think you do great. I haven't got a clue. But how humble of them yeah. to yeah. actually try and draw on us. Yeah. Two, yeah, two um, kids themselves. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. that's right. But we, isn't that the beautiful rookies. thing about the community we're yeah. talking yeah. about where yeah, we all have mm-hmm. something to offer each other and it's not primarily yeah. ourselves. It's the spirit of God, our Bibles, you know, the word of God. Yeah. And to, to keep encouraging one another. And I think that's a great reminder. Absolutely. Yeah, we need mm-hmm. each other. Well, guys, thanks so much for um, your time, Dave and Aram. And thanks so much for anyone who's survived this long. You made it. <laughs> if there's still one listening well, out there. you're still listening. Man, you are brave. I reckon they soul. broke it be... up into 10 chunks, three minutes a day or whatever it is. <laughs> you must be desperate. If you they must made be it this desperate. Far. Times are hard. Uh, our next episode, we're going to be dealing with failure. Uh, we're going to be talking mm. about some of these things like irreparable damage. Can I stuff up my child's life? Mm. Yep. Redemption and our culture of fear. So if that interests you, jump on our next uh, uh, episode. They're going to be coming out every couple of weeks. And don't forget, something really helpful you can do. I know we're hesitant to do this, but this will help others in our church and elsewhere um, to, to get to know about this podcast. You can subscribe to us on your podcasting app or on Spotify and leave us a review. That'll help others find us online. So thanks for joining us and we'll hopefully uh, see you guys again or hear from you guys again in a couple of weeks. Bye.